This is the Redmi 5 Plus, which is a budget Android handset by Xiaomi. And for about $200, you get a well-made device that's got lots of features such as a fingerprint sensor, the ability to use two SIM cards, and it will even shoot video in 4K. You can't get these handsets in all countries, however you can easily get hold of them on Gearbest, and as always I'll leave a link in the description below. So with all of that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. So Xiaomi include everything you would expect such as a SIM ejector tool and a power adapter and they even include a screen protector and a thin TPU case as well. There are a few different versions of this phone available but apart from the specs being slightly different they are the exact same phone in terms of design. Now this is the global version of the phone and it has a Snapdragon 625 processor, 4GB of RAM, 64GB of internal storage and it will also take an SD card for storing photos, videos and files. In terms of performance, I have been very happy. Apps open fast enough and while browsing the web for example, scrolling through pages is nice and smooth. Overall, gameplay has been good and I haven't had any serious issues with games lagging or the device slowing down on me. And even some of the more graphic intense games have run well. Sure, they might take a few seconds longer to load than they would on a more expensive device, but nevertheless, it's handled them well. Now, I've really loaded the phone up with all of the apps that I use, and I'm also using Nova Launcher and an Icon Pack 2, and it's currently running Android 7.1.2, which has performed well. Everything is fast and smooth, which really is very important to me. Xiaomi's MIUI or MIUI software is okay, although everything seems a little bit square and plain, but of course using a third-party launcher and an Icon Pack really can make a big difference. Also, updates are something that Xiaomi seem to be good at, and I've had two of them in the last two weeks, so it's nice to know that they are always working on those features and bugs. So now onto the IPS LCD display, which is covered in Gorilla Glass. Now it's a good size at 5.99 inches, it has an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, and a resolution of 1080 by 2160. Now bearing in mind that I've gone from the iPhone 10 to this, I've actually been very happy with the quality of the display. The screen is bright and the colours are vibrant. It can be a bit hard to see in direct sunlight, but it's definitely still very usable. Now if the display was just that little bit brighter, I'm sure it would be easier to see outside, but as long as you don't have the sun shining directly on the screen, in my opinion, it's not bad at all. Now I did notice that YouTube will play back at a maximum resolution of 1080p, but even then, videos do look clear and crisp, as do photos, apps and of course games. At the bottom of the device is a microphone, micro USB connection and also a speaker, which is loud and clear but it really does lack bass. On the back is a single 12 megapixel camera, a dual tone flash and also a fingerprint sensor which has worked every single time to unlock the phone and it's fast too. On the top of the phone is a 3.5mm headphone jack and an infrared sensor as well and although it's not something I will personally use, I think having that IR sensor there could come in handy in the future. Now this handset supports two SIM cards or one SIM card and an SD card and I think dual SIM card handsets seem to be getting popular again which isn't a bad thing and for some people this is a big selling point. So the 12 megapixel rear camera is very good for a budget device. It's certainly not going to be able to compete with flagship devices, but it does handle close-up shots well, and the f2.2 lens is able to produce some really nicely blurred backgrounds. Of course, for a better photo, you will need more light, and in low light situations, the images were still usable. Comparing this shot with the iPhone X, the Redmi 5 Plus didn't really do a bad job. And if you turn on high dynamic range, you'll also get a more balanced image. But for this test, I've left the HDR feature turned off just to see more of a raw image. I also shot some video in 4K at 30 frames per second, which is the highest resolution possible on this phone. And while it's okay, it is a bit grainy and the lack of optical image stabilization means that it's very hard to get any shake free footage. There is also a five megapixel front facing camera which I think managed to make me look reasonable, 
but I think in lower light situations this camera definitely will struggle. On to battery life and the Redmi 5 Plus has a 4000 mAh battery which has done very well and after nearly 11 hours of usage time there's still 53% of the battery remaining. It also does have fast charging so combined with a good battery life you spend a lot less time actually charging the phone which is very good. So there we have it guys, that's my review of the Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus which is available at Gearbest and you'll find a link in the description below. If you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss my next video. I'm Roger with Life of Tech, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.